So, Antonio Gomez. Hello, guys. So, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I apologize by this time delay. Uh, so, oh, I'm a, my name is Antonio. I'm a postdoc uh, in the Systems Biology Department at Columbia University. And I'll talk today about this research, the role of like, DNA accessibility in transition factor binding bacteria. Uh, this paper was just recently published at Plus Computational Biology. If anyone is curious for more details, you can just check it. Uh, I started giving a quick overview about uh, re gene regulation and its importance in adaptation in bacteria. This is a specific example. It's a schematic representation of a bacteria cell. We have a, a membrane that has proteins that can sense signals from the environmental, from the environment that can activate transition factors that recognize and bind specific regions in the DNA and it activates specific set of genes that help the bacteria for adaptation. This is just a schematic representation for one specific transition factor, but a bacteria actually is regulated in a complex network. For the case of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, their genome has about 200 transition factors that regulate around 4,000 genes. This hairball represents the regulatory network, each red dot represents a transition factor and the ads represent uh, uh, regulation. Uh, the way we can obtain and map the regulatory network of an organism is by doing experiments. Uh, one example is CHIP-seq. Uh, CHIP-seq stands for chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing. The steps of the experiments are represented schematically here in this figure. The chromatin immunoprecipitation step here you extract DNA from a cell, you break it in multiple fragments, and you, and you are going to have fragments of DNA without any transition factor, and some DNA pieces will be bound by transition factors. And you use antibody selection that purifies this transition factor. You're going to sequence this DNA, and then you identify the DNA regions by aligning these reads to the genome here, in the x-axis, we have the genome position, and you count how many ribs align there. That will provide the chipsy coverage. And we see peaks that are represented in red. This would indicate binary regions that you can, when you have multiple chipsy experiments, you can integrate them and find the regulatory network of an organism. This is nice, it's just an experimental procedure, but it would be interesting and, and good if you could actually predict the regulatory network of an organism without having to do experiments. Uh, if, you, if you could use computational tools that could reduce the cost and the time that you need with experiments and scale this uh, in large scale, you, uh, you could save time and solve approach problems and organisms that have never been studied before or conditions. Um, to do so, you have to think about what's going on. One way of doing so is thinking what's going on physically in the process of ChIP-seq binding. So you, you can wonder about the theory and, and, and you can use the ChIP-seq data to validate this theory. And when you have a, a proper model, you can actually start see something new that you couldn't see before just because you have the proper theory behind it. In, in a simple way, we can understand ChIP-seq and transition factor binding. They often recognize a motif that is represented here on the top, and you, if you see, if, if the transition factor see a sequence in the genome that has a strong match with this motif, it would be likely to be a strong binding, and then you'd expect a strong chipsy coverage. If this, uh, if, if the genome sequence has a weak match to this uh, consensus motif, you expect weak binding, and you'd see less chipsy coverage. When you go in the real data, if I, if I just compute the, uh, the motive, uh, a, a motive score for the match of the motive in the genome, and if I correlate that with the chip coverage, the correlation is not so great. It's uh, uh, 0 0.4 in this specific transition factor. And we, and we are wondering why that could happen. One possibility is that the genome is not equally accessible in all, uh, throughout the DNA. Um, this region 
would represent a region that would be accessible, and then you have a, a binding site here representing red in a transition factor that is this alter that could have access to it and bind. And in some condition, there will be nucleotide-associated proteins that would create structures or transition factors or something else that would make the DNA inaccessible, and then you don't see binding. And this is in bacteria. It's different in eukaryote organisms because they don't really have a, a nucleosome and chromatin structures. It's a, it's a uh, DNA accessibility in bacteria is more elusive. It's something that people talked about it, but it, they couldn't actually measure. So this is, a, this is the idea of this project. Maybe there is some DNA accessibility in bacteria and that we could measure. Uh, schematically, to organize the thoughts how, how to model and solve this problem, we represent the DNA by this strand here, uh, uh, linearly. And we can break the DNA in multiple regions. Each region will have a chip coverage and affinity. And they will be correlated, but not greatly correlated, maybe just poorly correlated. And what we wonder if is if there is some accessibility parameter that if you combine the affinity with the accessibility, we can actually estimate the chipsy coverage. So that was uh, the schematic representation, the, uh, the draft for, for the thinking to solve the problem. And in practice, we solve it using a Boltzmann distribution. So in this case, uh, this representation, I take the exponential of the, of the logarithm in both sides. And uh, on the left side, we have the probability of binding that will be related to the chipsy coverage a parameter related with affinity, and another one re related with the region accessibility. And this affinity parameter, you can actually break in two pieces. One that is experimentally specific, that depends on the condition that the transition factor uh, was uh, immunoprecipitated, or whatever experimental details, the concentration of the transition factor, or whatever is in the experiment. And this affinity parameter, you can estimate by matching this motif PWM through all the genome. I keep the equation on the right side just for reference. And we, with the equation and, and the proper model, we, we need data to validate if it makes sense. So we validate this in a, in a data that was published in 2013 in, uh, that maps the regulatory network of tuberculosis. And it has about, it has 64 transition factors that have found a, cons, uh, a binding motif with the PWM. The genome is split in, in fragments of 500 base pairs. And the probability of binding at each region is just obtained by normalizing the chipsy coverage at each region per experiment condition. And now that we have the model and the data, we can test and validate and, and see if it works. Uh, the rationale is very simple. If the accessibility parameters make sense, uh, if, if it doesn't help to inform the data, the, the parameter will be equal to zero. If it does help to inform the data, the parameter it's going to be somehow different than zero. And we can test that in the data. On the x axis here would be the coverage observed in the ChIP-seq data, and the y axis would be the coverage predicted if you use only the motif, which would be just based on affinity. And when we actually include the accessibility parameter, uh, the correlation proves uh, significantly, and uh, statistically, this is uh, p values less than uh, the resolution that you have to measure it. So, uh, so this is, uh, so then we, uh, at this point we say, okay, accessibility is actually something that's happening in the data and we, uh, we can measure, but it's good only if we can actually do something out of it. If it's uh, uh, the major problem that people do after doing chip seek experiments, the first step is to do the, what they would call peak calling. So we have to identify the binding regions. If we could somehow use this model to identify these peaks uh, in silico, then we can actually save time that would be used otherwise in experiments. And we did this, and we represent this in this ROC curve. The quality of the prediction is measured by the error under this curve. If the, the model that uses only motif uh, has a prediction power of 0 0.69, and when you actually use motif plus accessibility here, the error under the curve goes to 0 0.82. And this is a very simple model that can be even improved, but it proves the principle and, and, and show a practical application for this case. So, uh, 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 moving a little bit forward, we can also see something new using this data set, which is the accessibility in, in bacterial genomes. Uh, it's a little bit different than eukaryote and more elusive, 
elusive to measure because bacteria genome is very compact. 90% uh, of the genome is coding region and only about 10% regulatory regions. They don't have chromatin structure. And uh, this method actually help you to see accessibility in a quantitative way. And when you have a quantitative metric, we can ask, actually ask questions, hypotheses, and see what's going on uh, to, that caused this accessibility. So if you just plot the accessibility as a function of the genome location that is shown on the uh, left side of this plot, you see no correlation. However, if you control the genome location according to the distance to RAC, which is a region of replication, uh, the DNA also always replicates starting at this location. You see this very significant correlation here between the value of accessibility and this distance to origin of replication. And this indicates a mechanistic, uh, it's consistent with a mechanistic understanding of what's going on in the chip seek experiments. So uh, you can, uh, the, uh, the data is collected under exponential growth condition. And when you have the origin of replication, uh, close to the region of replication, the DNA is going to be duplicated and have multiple copies. And far from the region of replication, you're going to have only one copy. So this accessibility parameter, it indirectly indicates that you have, uh, it's consistent with the idea that you have high copy number close to your region of replication and less copy number far away from the region of replication. Or maybe just because close to the region of replication, the DNA is going to be more accessible or not, but those are two hypotheses that uh, could be tested experimentally that you can see based on this data set. Uh, this, so in the end, uh, the big problem and the goal that would be very useful uh, by having something that you can predict pick, uh, chip seek peaks in silico or de novo you can actually avoid experiments and reduce costs and time that you spend on them, and also scale for new organisms, new growth conditions that you wouldn't be able to do before. The theory is improved because you can understand better uh, what is actually happening in binding, not only affinity, but also accessibility on the cache. You can actually measure accessibility. And this is something new is this accessibility parameter. It's something in bacteria, all literature, they just mentioned, uh, maybe there is accessibility parameter here there is uh, accessibility may affect, but they never actually measure in a quantitative way, more quali qualitatively. Um, so this is, uh, for this work, I acknowledge my current lab, uh, that is Harris Wang, uh, and the lab, uh, that's where I pursue the research. And uh, my previous lab, James Galligan, um, and his lab, that's when I had access to Chipsic data. And, and I started to wonder about this. And uh, the research was developed under uh, Harris Wang's supervisor. And I, I mentioned to James uh, about this and said, yeah, cool, just go forward and do this. And, and that's what I got. Um, and so and then, of course, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of talking, everybody for listening. Uh, I like to say enjoy nature so that we can always remember about this, uh, traveling and talk with the person next to you because you're in a conference and I guess that's a good thing to do. And I'm open for questions and I'm also presenting a poster uh, F04. So if anyone wants to stop by and talk, I'll be there. Thank you. So.